to have you join us on the program. I'm Melinda Kinlami on our lineup today. A celebration of veteran artist Abayomi Baba as he turns 92. Then we head to Ogara in Delta State to see the Waste to Wealth mentorship creative process of these artists. So we're saluting one of Nigeria's living art legends as well as acknowledging those who are doing what they can to keep the creative spirit alive. Our wordsmith for this week is titled Water by Okpe Agbe, Okpe Yemi. Brown and dirty, but yet our hope. I often wondered, in my small mind, why ours was different. For school had taught me water. It was colorless, odorless, and tasteless, yet the water in the stream of my community was different. We bathed, cooked, and drank from it. Even when wells in neighboring communities dried up, it became our only source for thirst survival. Even the plastics, the grass on the water, they called them hyacinth, we ignored them all. Many a times, we found it difficult to pay to fill our empty kegs. We trekked the long distance. We carried our pots in its glory. But why didn't water drop in our taps? I often wondered why life was never easy in my community. No wonder everywhere smells in feces disgust. See, no taps, no water, no clean environment. This is the story of my community. In a week where the world celebrates water, we suffer water scarcity. That's a case of water, water everywhere, but there's none to drink. Thank you, Okoyemi, for sending us that Wattsmith titled Water. One thing that has always amazed me about this artist is the way he juxtaposes his images and gives them life. He has been training other creatives over the years at the Abayomi Art School in Lagos, which is one of his legacies. To celebrate his achievements in the art world, the National Gallery of Art organized this exhibition as he turns 92. The National Museum in Onikan, Lagos, seems apt for this celebration of someone who's been a big part of Nigeria's history and is considered a living legend. The champion of the surrealistic movement, Abayami Baba, is being honored today by the National Gallery of Art, who gathered the big wigs from different generations in the creative community to do him this honor. Going to the book on this foremost artist, it is very enlightening. One of the interesting aspects of his life is his penchant for self-improvement and appetite to hone his innate skill as an artist. He was never satisfied. He always yearned for more, and by so doing blazed the trail, even with a little formal education. This is a lesson for our younger generation. I urge all of you to get out of your comfort zone and strive to improve whatever skill you have. The future belongs to those who dare. The man we are celebrating today is a living testimony. The artists he has trained are part of the distinguished guests in attendance and the works he's created in his 70-year-old artistic journey are displayed inside one of the halls in the museum.
when you talk about Abayo Ribaba, you are not just looking at the man, you are looking at an institution. Because he, he had successfully trained a large number of uh, people who have taken after him, uh, using his techniques and his styles. Some of them are what we are seeing today. You know, he is a multi-talented artist. You know, uh, a painter, a sculptor, you know, he's a musician. You know. But he has this very quiet disposition that sometimes gives a very false impression of him. You know, he's a well-trained man, he's a well-disciplined man, you know. Um, his studio practice spanned over years, you know. And he's a man that you hardly find involved in controversies or unwholesome you know, behavior. He is a genuine mentor to so many artists. He's a fantastic sculptor, he's a fantastic painter, he's a fantastic designer, he's a fantastic musician, a saxophonist. So Abayam Baba cut across, he's just there. And of course, he's a good teacher of the arts. Uh, particularly, uh, today we are remembering him. He's still uh, very much around with us, though old at 92. Um, his legacy, his legacies will continue. You know why? He organized and started a school called Abam Baba School. And today we are seeing the product of some of those schools. Tony Alade and some of the other ones, um, Muriadim Jimmy, you know, and some other works. And the people are now propagating the gospel of Abam Baba. And so it's very important that we know this. This is a man that has contributed, he's contributing, and he will still continue to contribute by virtue of some of those things that he has laid down in visual art. It's a great Nigerian who is foresightful in this area of calling, the arts. Very early in his career, he saw the need to sustain his idea in arts creation and production for Nigeria and to the benefit of Nigeria and for the Nigerian youth. That was why he created his own art school with which he brought up uh, young Nigerians who themselves have also gone ahead to create their own schools, engaging younger ones to, to train and uh, equipping them with entrepreneurship so that they become employees of labor rather than being job seekers. So, at 92, he deserves our accolade, he deserves our praise, he deserves our celebration. One, God's grace on him to get to that age. And two, for being so active throughout, impacting on our social value and our creative industry. From the sculptural pieces, which was his first artistic attraction while growing up in Ileife, Oshun State, Southwest Nigeria, to the paintings which evolved over the years and became his identity due to his technique and style. He believes in realistic philosophy of painting, realism, 
also surrealism, which he uses to bring the subconscious to consciousness, using the unreal to create reality, and also to probe our consciousness to see beyond the known. So that way, we are able to probe our reality and see the hidden things that can impact on our understanding of our environment and our socioeconomic well-being. So that what stands him out. And today, he has many followers. When an artist is able to show this sort of expansive talent, you know, I'd like to liken him to uh, Renaissance, you know, the Renaissance period where you had people like uh, Da Vinci, you know, who was not only a painter, but was also an engineer who was also into anatomical drawings, you know, whose contributions to flight, you know, um, shaped uh, the world of aerodynamics. So you see a man like Abami Baba and you can only just doff your hat to him. We're proud of his achievements as 92. Many of us, you know, have defined our practices, you know, against his many accomplishments and uh, he will be long remembered. A lot of creatives have drunk from Abami Baba's well and they are grateful that he was gracious enough to share his ingenuity with the future and bring fame to the country. It's good to celebrate our legends, especially when they are still with us, and encourage the younger ones to grow as well. These are the works of art you sent in this week. Let's begin with this one, which captures the new Yam Festival. This artist is saying that let's reduce evil and embrace love and happiness in our society is done with acrylic mixed media on canvas. Then Time Out is an oil on chipboard paperwork done by Chris Ogebo. Kesa Frida has Flourish done with mixed media. And the two brothers is done by Adekunle with pen on paper. Okay, Gabriel has Sands of Time, is done with sand and adhesive on board. And Ekundayo Timidayo has Eve, done with charcoal and pastel pencil on paper. Then Daniel Dodge is celebrating the African Queen with this pencil and acrylic on paper piece. While this charcoal on glossy paperwork is done by Godwin Ejikeme, it's called Stomp. Money Searchers is a mixed media piece done by Sunday Adipoju. The story of my life, which is the first in the series, is an acrylic and oil on canvas piece done by Dominion Pedrochi. He says, in life, you just have to try and leave your footprints in the sands of time and touch the lives of others. Those are the works of art you sent in this week. We appreciate you for sending them in and we encourage you to keep them coming. The story of my life by Dominion reminds me of the essence of leaving our footprints in the sands of time by impacting the lives of others. That's what the Thought Pyramid Art Center is doing with this workshop in Delta State. We'll give you details in a moment. Join us again. Primitivism, identity often sought for by members of Western society, exerts a limitation and barrier against the progress of creativity. Thank you for staying with us. It's only apt that our art quote for this week will be from the veteran artist Abayomi Baba. 
Now let's head to the southern part of Nigeria. In Ogara Delta State, a waste to wealth journey is ongoing, organized by the Thought Pyramid Art Center. <laughs> the sound of metal and steel. has become music to the ears of these creatives as they join discarded objects together to produce life-sized images in this creative workshop put together by the Thought Pyramid Art Center in Oga Delta State. Contemporary artist Dotun Pukwola, who's become renowned for this kind of art, is leading the pack. Coordinating this program has been quite um, eventful and interesting at the same time. Meeting different people and great minds that are ready to learn, that are ready to, ready to make amazing works. Challenges, I don't think we had any challenges. I don't think we did. Everybody has been of great behavior. We've been able to provide things at the right time and all that. And... We should be expecting a great and massive work. And this artist, um, I think we should look out for them because they are amazing artists. Here, art is playing an important role in getting the environment of filth, debris, and other industrially disused material, especially in this age of technological innovation. The materials I have here are junks and flat bars. So if you look at it, you'll be seeing some junk metals inside, some scraps metal, and also the flat bar using to create a horse, which I titled Noble Steel, and also the vanishing horse. Most of my work, I tend not to finish everything. I tend to vanish some parts. So as an artist, you use your eye to complete the, the other part of the work. And also for those that are not artists, you, you get to think, you get to give you um, a room to think and to ask questions. Why are these works not complete? Why are the works always half? So as an artist, you complete the works with you. I imagine a noble steel matching and um, horse also. Noble steel are always ride by the royalties. The Waste to Wealth initiative is to expose and educate more artists on the enormous possibilities that abound in recycling discarded objects for art production. As an artist, I see art generally as a self-expression. And I choose to work on tire sculptures because I come to realize that in my environment there are a lot of materials that are supposed to be used for a work of art that are littering all around. So I choose to, um, to make use of tires to build sculpture, to build, to build unique, aesthetic, beautiful sculptures. Most of my works are used for documentation of our cultural values and also I use my art to explain some phenomena in the environment or in our society. For instance, I have one of my works here. I titled it Prey and Predator. The Prey and Predator is is, is an art that portrays the Nigerian society and the people where the government is always, is, is always preying on the, the masses, creating, creating a society where the rich becomes richer and the poor always poorer. For these artists, the entire experience has become a bountiful creative engagement amongst like minds whose interest connects intellectually in seeking ways of making art production less expensive yet passing across powerful and meaningful messages, at the same time beautifying the environment. Nice to see the potentials of these found objects. So when throwing that 
object that seems like trash away, just know that somebody can be picking them up and turning them to great works of art. As we count down to Democracy Day, creatives are showing us what they have been up to. Ahead of Nigeria's Democracy Day celebration, creatives have been really busy. For instance, this concept, tag Ninja Rocks, captures most of the monumental places in the country's commercial capital, Lagos, in artistic concept and puts it on proudly Nigerian items. I noticed that people are quite um, almost desolate and desperate for a change. And this is my own little way of saying that there could be more cheerful things about this nation through the gifts, the way I've interpreted the gifting culture in our country. And that's exactly what we have done. Then on Facebook, Udemir Jackson is showing us the creative process of his batik art titled Family and My Root, using dye on white brocade. His models strike a pose when he's done. Together we move is Daniel Ajayi's wall mural paint work, done with acrylic. The Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, has inspired a lot of people around the world, especially girls. We have this work done by Adekoya Queen, an eight-year-old who is inspired by the WTO boss. She has drawn her with her pencil and paper. The Hand That Give It is done with offset ink on paper by Tosi Uyini. Then this painting of Idumota Market, a very popular one in Lagos, is by Joy Idigo, who believes colors rule the world. And there are several other creations where this came from. We'll be showing you more of them on the next episode of At House. There's a lot to look forward to, but that will be the next time you tune into At House. Next week on At House. On the next edition of the program, we'll be showing you this photo walk which hopes to inspire people in the rural Abuja community. Then, your creative process sent into our various online platforms. We enjoy that and more in a moment. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. That's At House today. It's always a pleasure spending time with you and I look forward to more exciting things on the next episode of the program. Till then, you know where to find me on any of our social media platforms where the conversation continues. I'm Melinda Kinlami, encouraging you to stay safe and keep being creative.